गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई एम अंजलि सिंगल एंड आई बी गिविंग सम ओवर व्यू ऑन एफिशियंट एनर्जी एप्लीकेशन फॉर लो पावर डिवाइसिस सो इस सी सी द स्मार्टफोन ले रहा नाउ मेनी स्मार्टफोन अवेलेबल ऑफ लाइक गूगल एंड मेनी ऑफ यू मस्ट बी यूजिंग और एटलीस्ट मस्ट आर सीन सो इस सी लुक ऑन द सेल्स पर ईयर फॉर द पी सी एंड स्मार्टफोन In starting, there were 2000 uh, AMD processors were there, which were fastest in 2000. Then after um, 2006, Intel launched their um, core processors. Um, due to that, Intel came in. Um, Intel was the um, company which has the fastest proce processors. Then after that, um, GP GPUs were came in into picture at 2009. Then uh, we had ARM processor in 2011. Which took over the market. Which um, now in all the smartphones and um, low power devices, we use ARM processors. The sales of the smartphone is increasing as compared to PC every year. Also, people are using mobile inter internet over the desktop internet. Uh, till 2015, the uh, market studies uh, showed showed that um, the use usage of mobile internet users will be much more than the desktop internet users. So as we move on from um, the desktop era to the smartphone era the, um when we were in the desktop era we took care of the performance most mostly how to increase the performance now and so that we had gnu processor a tool uh, to determine how is the performance of our desktop applications and how we can improve it then as we moved on to the smartphone era now the battery life is limited so the uh, the thing which we we have to take care of most is how to save energy which is the most critical issue in the smartphone era so we need a energy profiler similar to kind of the gnu profiler which will show how we can uh, where the energy is dissipated and how we can conserve it and um, how we can reduce the energy loss so first of all for this you need to know where the energy is spent if you are running any application um the smartphone is heating up the battery is um the power is reducing so where the energy is going which component of your smartphone is utilizing that energy and which component is utilizing more energy and which is utilizing less energy so there are two approaches which we will be seeing in this um, talk the first approach is presented in the paper an analysis of power consumption in smart smartphone um they, this paper is presented by university of no no new south wales in 2010 so what they say um they also try to um, measure how the how, where the energy is dissipated and um, how much it is spent so the technique which they are using is the hardware technique so also yeah the power distribution the components which may, uh, mostly they are in the smartphone are cpu memory touch screen is there graphics hardware audio storage and the networking devices um so they take physical measurement of the power at each hardware component so for the uh, for this testing the device in the test which they used is, was the sleeve runner device um, this is very old device and it was totally reconfigurable so they used this device so as you can see there is a application processor and it has uh, various uh, components like gsm module wifi gps bluetooth and the sd card graphics etc so each of Um, whenever you are running any application, each of the device is consuming some energy. So what uh, they did to measure this, uh, they used a device, a uh, national instruments, um, PCI 6229 uh, DAQ. Uh, this device they used to measure the voltage, and it consisted of the sense registers, um, which um, which they connected to the mobile circuit, so that they can measure the power. Uh, power uh, voltage drop at each uh, component the peak voltage drop uh, which they said was less than 1% of the supply voltage so that the disturbance in the voltage drop will be as minimum as possible so now to uh, calculate the power consumed by a component both voltage and the current should be known at each com uh, hardware component so we'll see some benchmarking techniques which they used to measure the voltage and current and then to determine how much power each co component is consuming the first of all uh, we we'll see some terminologies which they used 
like the total power which is supplying, which we are supplying to the device, that the term as a total power, and uh, the sum of all the total power consumed by all the devices, that is the aggregate power. Now this is not same because of heating and some other external components which we, uh, if they are attached, and we are not considering. And the benchmarks were uh, coordinated on the host machine, and they were communicated to the uh, device under test via the serial cable. So two types of benchmark they um, gave. Well, one was a uh, micro benchmark and the micro benchmark. In the micro benchmark, um, the CPU, RAM, and um, how much uh, uh, energy CPU, RAM, etc. These devices are using. They calculated that, and their peak and the power consumption. And with the mi micro benchmark, they um, the real usage scenario was considered. Like if there is a smartphone, either there will be a low interactive application like audio and the video, in which you'll just play that and you'll listen or you wa you'll watch. And uh, other than that, there will be highly interactive application, in which you'll use web browsing or suppose text, uh, text messaging, etc. So, in um, to record the high, highly interactive application, what they did was that they used a trace-based approach. Like, um, if I'm using a smartphone, so I'll create um, a test. Suppose I'll um, I'll go to a browser, I'll open it, and I'll type some URL and I'll um, browse that page. I'll scroll down and again I close the browser. So this is a type of a test. So I'll, I'll record all the events. I'll record where was my coordinates on the touch screen. And um, all these will be recorded and again will be played under the benchmarking situations. So they'll be written to a file in the Linux kernel. Actually the host machine is a Linux, Linux kernel on which the benchmark will be running. and then under those benchmarking situation, the power consumption of the device under test will be calculated. So, um, in Linux kernel, um, some dev input uh, slash in event uh, directory is there in which you can write the event and then um, you can run those commands on the device under test. So, it was found that the in a test stream event, um, major amount of energy is required in delivering from the event from the kernel to the software. So, they, um, there were some baseline cases. Suppose a smartphone is there. So, two baseline cases can be there. It can be in the... Okay. So, for a uh, smartphone device, suppose, then two baseline cases are there. So, uh, it can be in the suspended... Uh, it can be a suspended device or an idle device. So, the suspended device in which the application processor is idle and the communication processor... Um, performs certain activity like the network synchronization has to be done if you have to you want to receive a call but you are not working anything so that in that case the device is the suspended device so in this case the uh, the paper in, the, in that paper they found out that gsm system um, dominates the uh, consumption of the power by almost 40, uh, and it consumes 45% of the total power then um, the device can be in the idle situation um, where no no applications are active and um, it is fully awake. The display is on, but you are not doing anything. So uh, in the in this case, the display dominated, and also GSM um, consumes the power. But display consumes about fifty percent of the total power due to the graphics chip and the LCD screen. So uh, first we'll talk about the micro benchmark. How to how we can um, run those and uh, measure the power consumption. So for um, CPU and RAM, um, this is the um, benchmark spec to, uh, CPU 2000 suit uh, in which um, we can um, certain um, standard uh, scripts are there which we can run to find out the um, power consumption by CPU and the RAM. Then flash storage is there. So flash storage, that is the SD card which we use in the smartphone. So a Linux DD program is there, uh, which can uh, find out the, which can do the benchmarking of the flash storage. Then for the network, which includes the Wi-Fi and the GPRS, which, which is there in the GSM modem. So the test was done by downloading a file by WGET and then um, um, finding how much um, 
power is consum uh, power consumption is there then for the gps there is a gps status to android application which does the same um, function and for the macro benchmark like um re yes just um, we'll see the how much um, sending and receiving of the data has been done i still use cpu yes sir but we'll um, that will be the power consumption will be very less compared to the um, what wifi and gprs gsm module will be using they report that also on they just yes sir because the power Flash storage. Only power consumed by the flash storage. No, sir. They report for each component, but um, uh, that is dominates. Yeah. Yes, sir. And they are supposed to measure the um, dominant um, power consumption of that particular component, and it is dominating when we run this program. So I'll uh, just tell you how we can benchmark the following real uh, usage scenarios. the results actually i have not performed so i am not discussing on that that much so in audio file we can just store in the sd card and out output is given to the stereo headphones so in that um, gsm power is also included because the gsm module is um, to, uh, all the time active in the video uh, video was played using the android's camera app, uh, application so the display and cpu were the biggest consumer of the power then text messaging the uh, in this they ran a trace application trace event in which what they did they opened a contact then selecting a contact typing and sending the message and returning to home, home screen so the power consumed was of course dominated by display components then phone call it is also trace based like the um, loading the dial application dialing and then making a call and the dial devices were was configured automatically to receive the call after 10 seconds so in this gsm power clearly dominated uh, next application is emailing so um they yeah it included opening the email application downloading and reading emails and replying to two of them so this is the standard uh, benchmark which they have set and they ran that so clearly gsm consume more, more power in web browsing it can be done either by using wifi or gsm so they ran using both the benchmarks using the wifi and gsm so what they did again they used a trace based approach and um yeah loading a browser application and then selecting a bookmark website and browsing it so they ran using wifi and gprs both but gprs consume more power by the factor of 2.5 as compared to wifi how did they calculate the Actually, that is not. Yeah. Then, will it not fall in the micro benchmark if you say I can calculate two point five? Um, sir, so web browsing is a real usage scenario. Micro benchmark was using uh, calculating the power consumption for small devices. Yeah. Each, each yeah, each core component. Yes, sir. But um, web browsing is a real usage scenario. Any user will, of course, web browse the web. and it can uh, browse using the wifi connection or the gsm connection provided by the mobile can not can can not use this technique to include in the micro benchmark yes actually they didn't consider gprs here no they consider network here yeah it was a very simple test of just downloading a file using wget and that was a complex application of browsing a web so analysis of this um so as we can see the majority of power consumption can be attributed to the gsm yes sir is it point 5 factor that means they have used micro benchmarks in micro benchmarks mm, yes sir so they ran this web browsing test for gprs and for wifi so how did they find that Uh, so I show you the results. Actually, they have made a graph. It's a macro. It has to be combined. 
you are not supposed to see what is there below. Sir, actually, I should have written then two points because web browsing can be done by using GPRS. That was one back macro benchmark, and then web browsing can be done using Wi-Fi also. So they compared the two macro benchmarks actually. Uh, not, not at the same time. Yes, sir. Separate time. So G uh, though we used Wi-Fi and GS G GSM both, still GSM consume more power. So the majority of power consumption can be attributed to GSM. And display, um, and also uh, like selecting a light on dark color screen can significantly reduce the energy consumption. That was seen um, by the experiment done by this paper. Then um, uh, the GSM module uh, consumes both static and the dynamic power. Static because it has to maintain the network connection, and dynamic if it is having some call or uh, if you are browsing uh, net and also um, dimming the backlight, backlight which is present in the uh, mobile as Android does, it can also save the power up to 40%. Um, and also obviously we should uh, shut down the unused components and disable their power supplies if they are not using. Android, is, Android is the, uh, does that automatically and RAM, audio and flash systems consistently shows the lowest lowest power consumption so they are not that effective we just have to take care about the gsm and the display mostly so this was the uh, was the hardware approach which we saw that how we can measure the energy now we see the software approach which was given by the paper fine grained energy accounting on smartphone with eprof and this was the paper by purdue university in 2012 the recent paper only so they developed a tool called eProf, which is which was the first energy profiler tool for the smartphone applications. Um, so as um, there is one more tool called gProf. So that gProf tool also um, does the same kind of thing, power um, analysis of power and energy, but for the desktop devices. And also there is a unique behavior uh, for the smartphone devices that is the asynchronous power behavior which was not uh, in the case of the desktop devices. So that is why GProf can't handle, GProf can't be used for the smartphone devices. We'll see what asynchronous power behavior is in the later slides. So also in the summary they say that most of the energy in the smartphone applications they spend is due to the I.O. events. So they'll try to minimize its I.O. events and we'll see how. Okay. So again, the key enabler for the um, power consu energy consumption is to know where the energy is spent. So there are a few challenges here, um, which uh, based on this, the EPROF tool works. So first of all, they, um, they find out that um, they track the activities of the program entities at the, at the granularity which, uh, which the developer is interested in. Suppose I want to know that uh, many threads are running in a smartphone at the present time. So I want to know that each thread is, how much energy each thread, thread is consuming. Or I want to know each subroutine, how much energy it is consuming or a process. So we should know at which granularity we, the developer wants the details. So first of all, this the, uh, we have to track all those entities. Suppose we want a particular thread, how much energy it is consuming. We have, have to track the thread first of all how it is invoked and when it goes to sleep and um, when it finishes its tasks, like that. Uh, next challenge is the, to tracking the power to activities of components, each hardware component, that um, GSM, when, how much power it is consuming at a particular time um, and when it goes to sleep, off mode, etc. Then we have to map both of them, active, uh, both of the first and second point. That uh, what, what program entities are making the uh, particular component drop power. So the mapping of uh, these uh, two points has to be done in the third point. So these are the challenges which they face and also asynchronous power behavior. Okay. And um, in summary they say that the eProf tool finds that in the popular apps, the third party advertisement modules in the free apps which you use consume 65 to 75 of the total energy. So it is a huge amount. And 
um, also this we uh, they track the user data like if you're using a map application they track where your mobile is which area you are in etc so that also consumes 20 to 30 percent energy whereas the um, the real task which the application is doing is, con is consuming only 10 to 15 percent of the total energy so okay first we'll um, find out that how we can account the, um, at which granularity the de uh, developer wants to work on so the entities which um, the developer wants to account for can be a process thread subroutine or system call so first of all from the interns how many of them are available um, aware of the operating system um, so uh, those of you don't know operating system is an interface between hardware and software obviously and uh, whenever any call is there the um, call stack uh, suppose you run many applications at, at a time it is not running all those applications at the same time it is switching between those ap applications at um, very few microseconds so when it switches to the other application it dumps the data of the previous application in a stack where it maintains about the subroutine which um, where, where it has to return after completing the task okay and which address it, um, the code is written etc so that is um, whenever you call suppose a read function is called for the file that is a system call read write all those are the system calls so in subroutine you all know um, the functions which you write are subroutine a thread um, uh, multiple threads are running like multitasking is there in java so we run multiple threads for the parallel execution and a process um, when we run a program it is a process okay so a developer want may want to account the energy at any of those entities at any of the level of those entities now how we have to track those entities we can log the io system calls then we can also log the call stacks by which we can know ki which calling routine it is calling that system call and which thread it is um, we can also log the uh, process and thread ids at each cpu context switch so so that we can uh, log about the process and the thread um, the challenge which um, uh, eprof is facing is asynchronous power behavior like at a time if you have any call then suddenly the gsm module will go in a very high state and suppose if you are browsing net and you are downloading a file again the gsm module will go in very high state then again if you are um, messaging uh, text messaging is done then the display will go in very high power state so suddenly very high power um, consuming events occur so to track them it uh, is a cha challenging task and also several components are used simultaneously here you are calling you are messaging also you are playing games and you are browsing net also so multitasking is there and um, power consumed by each io component is uh, comparable or higher than that by the cpu as by the study done by this paper so um, different power state for a component can be in base state it can be a zero power state the component can be totally switched off or it can be on on a one or more more level of productive state like wi-fi can be uh, the signal for the wi-fi can be high or low it can be in the tail state with we'll, uh, study about the tail state for the when it can be in the idle state except net network at uh, this idle state is for the whole device except net network components all components are off and whereas the above three are for the particular component okay so what we are trying to do is first of all we will track each entity each thread and then we are tracking about the component how much power each component is using so we are trying to find which power state the component is in it can be in a base state productive state or tail state so what a tail energy is like Several components, disk, Wi-Fi, 3G, GPS, etc., they uh, exhibit tail behavior, wherein um, activities like suppose a routine is uh, routine is calling the uh, GPS, and due to which the GPS going goes in the high power state, so it can trigger a component. A routine can trigger a component to a high power state and stay in that power state long be beyond at the end of the routine. Suppose one routine is calling. 
um, suppose you are using a SD card in a smartphone. You are reading from the SD card and simultaneously you can again write to the SD card. So more than one routine are using the same, um, same component. Suppose you finish the read and then you write on the SD card. Then as soon as you finish the read, um, and you are, then you are again use, using the right uh, SD card. So the power state, high power state due to which the SD card was in was due to read. But now after read finishes, the component is still in the high power state, but due to a some other entity. That is the right call. So this is, um, this refers to a tail energy behavior that the component is still in the high power state even after that, that entity's um, fill, um, end. It, even after the end of the routine. Now, uh, this wake lock concept is used in Android. That uh, wake lock is used because the smartphone is using aggressive sleeping technique that whenever a device is not used, then just put it into the sleep state. Okay. So, what actually is done that a wake, uh, suppose um, I want to use SD card and suppose I want to read it then the read entity will acquire the wake lock for the SD card then the trigger and it will trigger the component into a high power state. Now after the a component is in the high power state due to the caller entity that is the read entity in this case. So the wake lock is acquired for SD card. Now the component co continues to consume the power after the entity is completed even after the read call is completed and other entities start using the component. Right? That is you may, either, um, you may write or something, then still it will be in the high power state. It, you, uh, the write will not try to acquire the wake lock again. The wake lock is already acquired um, by the read lock, but um, to indicate that SD card is in the high power state now. Then now after the, okay, and then the component is returned back to idle power state when the wake lock is released. So it will be um, going to the zero power state only after the wake lock is released. Till that it will be in the high power state. Okay. So there is a uh, FSM diagram shown for the wake lock that uh, initially the device is in the idle power state. Now it will go, okay. So it will go to the full wake lock when the device is being used. That is the high power state. Okay, and when the uh, wake lock is released, then it will again go to the idle power state. And suppose the screen uh, screen is dim, so some other uh, wake lock is given for that. So when the screen screen will be done dim, then the uh, idle from idle it will go to the screen dim wake lock. That is in the background the applications may be running still, but the screen is dim. So in that case it will be consuming uh, less power but it will still be consuming the power and the wake lock is still uh, acquired. It is not yet released. And after releasing again, it will go to the idle state. Then the partial wake lock is there. Okay. So similarly, uh, this is the wake lock FSM. Now the asynchronous power behavior can be again due to the exotic components like GPRS, GPS, camera, etc. So what happens in, uh, why these are ex exotic components? Because once these components are switched on by some uh, entity or some system call etc, uh, they continue to drain power um, until the moment they are switched off. They are same like the um, wake locks or the, um, yeah, the wake lock is used for them only, uh, mainly. That is, they continue to drain power till they are switched off. Like if you are not using camera but still it's on. So it will be continue to drain same, same power. So this asynchronous power behavior, they are trying to capture it in a FSM, finite state machine. So what the FSM um, they are um, modeling is the power state, each power state will be a node and the transition will be the system calls or any entity. A thread process or a system call will take the component into one from one power state to another power state. So now they are taken an example of the tail energy. What happens is, uh, suppose this is a 3G modem. Uh, so what they are doing, they are suppose first trying to connect it. Then uh, some uh, system calls are there after connect, um, ramp up, then uh, TCP handshake protocol is there. And after that, uh, we issue the send, uh, we send something. Okay. 
so what was shown in uh, what they observed in the paper was after the same was over still it uh, start, uh, it consumed power so when it, even if the device was not in the use so this is this they call as a tail 3 3g tail that even if the device is not used still it is consuming power so um, the device is totally inactive during that period so it is called the tail energy similarly what other test they did was um after the connect and the 3g ramp up and tcp handshake protocol um they they send after the five uh, after five second so what they uh, saw that even if the send was not there still the 3g tail was there the device was inactive still it was using the power and and then it uh, the first send came and the send was over still it used the power even if it was inactive so what they are trying to say that after certain period of time the device goes into the tail energy mode till it it is being used again and it is in the tail energy mode for certain period of time a specific uh, period of time which is static okay and it will be there whether or not it is being used so this is the energy which is being which is being wasted so um, so even if um, so they have not talked actually about wake lock in this but um, they are saying that when the gps is um, gsm modem is used and we are we send something um, so actually after the tcp handshake protocol uh, immediately after that the send something was sent the data was sent and here after the tcp handshake protocol um, they waited for some time and uh, they waited for 5 second and then they send some data so they are trying to say that even if the the device was not sending or receiving anything it still it went to the tail energy state and it was in tail energy state and suddenly some event came that is the send event and after that that was correct to say that uh, connection is established so we could still maintain that energy level so pardon i didn't get you the connection is established by doing handshake mm -hmm. we could still maintain that energy certain period of time um so i'm i'm coming to that point yeah so um, as we have seen in the previous diagram that the tail energy was being wasted that the device the device was not in the use till it was consuming the energy so to measure that tail energy they are using uh, the last trigger policy various policies can be used actually so what they are trying to do i'll explain by the example only okay so they are specifying the energy while they are measuring the energy they are specifying it as a energy tuple u comma n where u represent the utilization energy what that component is actually utilizing and the tail energy for that instant okay we'll see example suppose the sd card is there so the efficiency for sd card they have shown is um first it is in the idle state base state where it is consuming zero power now if any event is com coming like file read write etc then it will go to the high power state that is the d1 state where it will consume certain amount of current okay then after that it will go to the tail state d2 is the tail state where it will consume less power but it will still consume power then in that if um, when it is in the tail state and any event comes then again it will go to the high power state from the tail state and if uh, any event doesn't come and it is in the tail state then after certain uh, time out time out um, time it will go to the base state that is the zero power state how much time will it take for those from 1 to 5 milliampere to 1 milliampere so who decides that this was the measurement when they measured it in general demonstration okay. besides to that uh, time going from 125 milliamperes to 75 milliamperes so that i don't know okay so is there some uh, specific android internet must be specifying this yes, must be part of this law It is not wake lock. 
uh, it must be something operating system related event only because uh, this vm6 is the windows mobile this fsm they have shown is for the they have tested on two devices one in the one is the android operating system and the one is the windows mobile so this fsm they have shown is uh, windows mobile so wake lock is not used no, Mm. Yes, sir. So tail energy is being wasted everywhere. Now we have to account for each energy. So now if we are if we are measuring the energy, then um, if we are suppose measuring the energy directly, then we will see that uh, for this amount of time, so much energy is consumed. So still we can't know that even after the send is uh, completed, why it is consuming the energy. To account for that, uh, we'll we'll take an example. Suppose also um, any component is there. So at a time, a component may be used by many different ent entities. Suppose the SD card is there. So many different activities like we may be doing two times read, writing on on the SD card at the same time. And we are uh, doing sev several uh, tasks at that same time. So concurrent access for uh, that device is there always. Um, so what we'll do? Is we'll take a, uh, we have taken an example for the concurrent device access. Um, so this is a SD card usage uh, diagram. So suppose a read call is there first of all. Okay. So U1 is the uh, when read call is being issued to SD card, it will go to the high power state. Then for um, U1 is the amount of energy which it is using for the high power state. Then it will go to the tail power state for N1. It will stay in the tail power state for a certain amount of time. Then again they are showing that if read is issued still, it is not for the concurrent access. It is just your um, to show how the tail energy is calculated. Okay. So first read is there. So U1 energy it is using in the high power state. Then it will go to the tail power state and it is using n1 amount of energy. Okay. Then after that, when it is uh, using, it is in uh, tail state and again read command is issued. So it will go to the high power state again from the tail tail state and it will consume suppose u2 amount of energy. Okay. And while it is in the read state and it has finished the read state, read state, so it is about to go to the tail energy state and we issued a right call. So it will go to some uh, again high power state for the right call and uh, utilize u3 amount of energy so after a certain time it will go to tail state n2 and again go to the base state okay so this is the scenario which we have considered so now we want to find the energy tuple for each uh, system call so for the read system call um, the utilization energy is u1 and the tail energy is n1 okay for the read uh, system call, the utilization energy is U2, where the, there is no tail energy. So it is 0. Okay. For the write system call, as um, we are using a last trigger policy. So what happens in the last trigger policy is that um, the tail energy which is there, we add it to the last entity which is using that device. So what we will uh, we'll see N2 tail energy. So without seeing, we will associate it to the last entity which is um, used. So we will associate N2 to the U3 and then we will see that again the device is in the high power state so it is having zero tail energy. Then again we will see that tail energy is there so we will associate it to the previous entity. So um, th uh, therefore we can uh, uh, put some energy tuples that is U1, N1, U2, 0 and U3, N2. So this is the uh, uh, saying by using the last trigger policy that is uh, the tail energy is corresponding to the last entity which is using the component. So from um, back side we start. Um, so for different system calls actually it may be different. I am not still sure. Depends on the o operating system maybe. So actually the N1 may not, it may not be completed in its tail power state, uh, in between if there is a call, yeah. Uh, we can start before. Yes sir, okay. yeah because in the FSM 
if it is in the tail state and high example where n1 goes down then i didn't take that example but in if n1 goes down then it will be in a base power state then it can again easily calculate so this is how we calculate the energy tuples now there may be concurrent access as we talked about that multiple thread can access the component at the same time like if you take angry bird application there is a flurry application which is uh, the third party uh, uh, module which is uh, showing you the ad advertisement so the uh, concurrent thread is being run uh, for the angry bird application so similarly for our component many concurrent threads may be running so what we do like um, now how to find energy tuple in that case when uh, concurrent access is there because we will just find the uh, total energy consumed by the device okay so how are we distributed to each um, system call or the threads so what we do is first we estimate the complete time of each system call patients disk read disk write and disk disk read to so all are happening at the same time and uh, the device is in the high power state for this much amount of time and then it is in the tail state for this much amount so how do we classify that which uh, system call is using how much energy and what is the tail energy corresponding to that so for that uh, how we'll calculate the technique which they have in this paper they have used is like uh, suppose three um, events are there three entities are there then uh, we will divide the uh, total time of the high power state such that in each interval different amount of um, entities are uh, on like in this um, yeah yeah like that in this plus this right yeah and then third is yeah this this right yeah yeah so in this only discrete one is on running in this only discrete uh, in this uh, only these two are running in this all three are running then in this only these two and in this only the last one is running so like that they split and what is d1 d1 d uh, so d1 is the high power state and d2 is the tail state tail state um uh, of the component like we saw in the diagram d1 and d2 uh, yes sir because the device is in totally high power state only so now we are splitting it according to the entities so and this is how we calculated the energy that in u1 only discrete one is there in this first interval only u1 is there for corresponding to discrete one then in uh, second interval half of it is consumed by discrete one then one third of it, it is consumed in here uh, like that it is there oh yes sir yeah like in the fourth interval they have considered that only re these two reads are running whereas this write is running in the in these two intervals so and then as according to the last trigger policy the tail energy is corresponding to the last entity which was used using that component so it will be corresponding to only the discrete two even and rest all have zero tail energy so this is how we calculate the energy tuple now they have not covered for ram and um, the led screen because they are accessed at much higher rates and they are exhibit a more a synchronous power behavior so this this was having very high overhead so they didn't cover this part now uh, actually developing this tool so now we have discussed what challenges um, were there and how they overcome that and how they found out the energy tuple etc now the tool which they have developed has three um, parts first part is the code instrumentation and the logging now we have to trace the entities like if the thread at the thread level we want the details then we have to trace all the threads if we have to calculate for the processes then we have to uh, trace all the processes so the code instrumentation has to be done that is the application source code has to be modified and and we have to uh, add the logging code to log all the events io events process ids thread ids etc and then again we have to install it on our mobile so uh, after this installing of the um, application 
then we will account for the energy which the policy which was used that the last trigger policy and we find the energy tuples in this energy accounting and the, then according to those energy tuples we show that we present the data yes sir actually they found yeah so the the overall overhead was very less they said that 4 4 to 11 percent 4 to 11 percent overhead um. so it was actually written i don't remember it right now i'll tell you later. so yeah in first phase it is the logging is done and then uh, okay in the second phase what is what is being done that first of all all the trace events are calculated like if, suppose we want to run for any benchmark then we calculate we record all the input events suppose for web browsing we are opening the browser then we are downloading a page then we are scrolling down and again closing it so these events are being recorded and then again played in a benchmarking con uh, condition and then the energy tuples are calculated and finally it outputs the energy profile so the system calls they log by inserting android debugger logging apis so these are used for logging the system calls and um, to log the calls and call stack also and also the arm linux does not support uh, user space backtracking from inside the kernel so bionic c library interface was used to log the call c stacks now what happens like angry bird application is there where source code is not available then how do you uh, trace and log all the events etc so what they have done um, they modified the framework to automatically start and stop eprof routine and the system call tracing so now the android framework will do all the work of call tracing and logging and then it uh, performs the energy profiling without needing a recompile for the application and then the accounting is done so like the app, uh, for a particular application eprof has to be started and then it accounts for the energy the trace has to be again re, uh, replayed so the application framework does that no only when we have to account yeah in this case you don't know yeah, because the source code is not available. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now this is in the pre um, in this paper they have mentioned that in the previous version of Android the just in time compiler was not present due to which it used to consume lot uh, huge amount of energy even for the CPU uh, computations. So this they reduced to um, greater amount by using the JIT uh, compiler in Android also. So this was just a study how uh, JIT compiler reduces the power consumption. Okay. So the references which I used was the two papers. Any questions? When we say 50% it is consumed, for example, in suspended state it is 40% or in idle state it is 50%. 50% hmm. of what? Total power, like uh, in suspended state, uh, state only the GSM is we are running. So it is consuming the total power which the smartphone is consuming during that state. GSM is consuming fifty percent, forty percent of that total power. If, if, uh, in that state, uh, it includes idle state also. The idle state is when the device is active, the screen is on, but you are not doing anything. And suspended. Yes, yes, not. Yes. What is hundred percent? So 100% is when your GSM is also on, yes. display is also on, call is also on. Then it's coming to 90. GSM 10% will be 10% for the actual application maybe, if you're running. Thank you.